Hermione's Song Chapter 15 Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Harry Potter made his way back to the Gryffindor dormitory alone after dinner. The evening meal had been much quieter than usual, and that left him feeling uneasy. Ginny had not shown up to eat, so Ron had gone looking for her. Hermione finished eating in record time and went off to look after the doctor. That really only left him and Neville. Even though he thought of Neville as a good friend, they really didn't have many interests in common. When Harry reached the fat lady portrait, she wouldn't meet his eyes. Harry, you know that I can't keep ghosts out of the dorm, right? She asked cautiously. When Harry nodded, she let out a sigh of relief. Oh, for the record, I did tell Peeves to get lost, but he floated right through me anyway, she said indignantly. Now what? Harry moaned. He quickly said the password so he could get inside and find out what had happened. Lions rule, snakes drool. It still made him smile when he thought about how Hermione had gone on for hours after the newest password change, saying that snakes didn't have the saliva glands necessary to drool, totally missing the point. The fat lady swung away from the wall to reveal the opening to the Gryffindor common room, and Harry rushed through. Everything in the common room looked to be in place once Harry stepped inside. He felt slightly relieved until he saw Ron on the couch trying to comfort his sister, Ginny. The thought that Peeves had done anything to upset her made Harry want to find a way to kill that annoying ghost a second time. He rushed over to where they were sitting. Ginny, what's wrong? He asked gently, his feelings for her evident in his voice. When she didn't answer right away, Harry looked at his best mate. Ron, what's going on? He inquired. Harry could see warring emotions cross Ron's face. Eventually, Ron frowned and muttered, Sorry, mate. Not my place to say. This caught Harry completely by surprise. Usually, Ron had a bit of a problem with saying whatever was on his mind, regardless of how people would take it. Ron looked at Ginny and took her hand. I can't tell you what to do, but I can say that if there's any person on this earth that would understand, it's Harry, he whispered so only Ginny could hear. She squeezed his hand and nodded, relieved to finally let the man she had fallen head over heels for know her secret. Ron started to get up, but Ginny held onto his hand. You can stay, Ginny said softly. He let go of her hand and instead of completely getting up, scooted further down the couch to give Harry room to sit next to Ginny. While Harry sat, Ginny sniffled once and brushed her long red hair out of her face. Sorry, Harry, I just get a bit sad every year on this day, she apologized. Harry stayed silent, letting her tell him what was on her mind in her own time. Ginny took in a long breath, not quite sure how to share something her parents had forbid. She knew they would understand. It was Harry, after all. Ron caught his sister's paws and decided to get the ball rolling. Harry, do you know how long it's been since a girl was born into the Weasley family? He asked. I have no idea, Harry replied. Ten generations. Our great, 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 you get the idea, grandfather pissed off a really powerful witch and she cursed our family to have only sons, and a lot of them to boot, Ron explained. We used to be a rich family, but having to pay the food bill when you have a household of at least three to five boys pretty much bankrupted us, he joked. Harry smiled despite things and looked at Ginny. So somehow the curse was broken and Ginny got born, he provided, guessing that was what Ron was getting at. Nope, the curse is still in place, Ginny corrected Harry. I'm adopted, she admitted, carefully watching his face for his reaction. So what? Harry replied, shrugging. To him... She might as well have said that she had been born on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday for all that mattered. Ginny was Ginny, and that was all he cared about. He didn't realize it, but his complete lack of a reaction was exactly what Ginny had been hoping for. Ginny grabbed Harry by the face and placed a warm kiss on his lips. Thank you, Harry Potter, she told her confused boyfriend. Told you he'd understand, Ron teased. He made an uncomfortable face and added, Could you just leave off the snogging until after I leave? Please. Ginny blushed and let her hand slip down into Harry's. The reason I get depressed on this day is it's the day Professor Dumbledore found me on the steps of the school, she explained. How old were you? Harry asked, wanting to learn everything he could about the amazing redhead holding his hand. Mum and Dad guessed she was about one when Professor Dumbledore brought her to the burrow, Ron supplied. He told them he took one look at her flaming hair and he could think of no other family to raise her, he told Harry. The way Dad tells it, 
Mum almost knocked Professor Dumbledore over in her rush to get to Jenny. Dad said he and Mum fell in love with her the instant they laid eyes on her. They would have taken her in even if you-know-who had been the one who dropped her off, he joked. Harry couldn't comprehend being placed with a family that had that much love to spare. The only thing he could think of was how thankful he was that Jenny had been given that opportunity. He smiled at her and gave her hand a small squeeze. Jenny decided to take over the narrative. When Professor Dumbledore dropped me off with Mum and Dad, he also gave them everything that had been left with me. A blue and white baby blanket, a magically locked box, and a broken muggle watch, she told Harry. Since I was left with a muggle item, odds are I'm at least a half-blood or even a muggle-born, she pointed out. Once again, Harry shrugged, completely oblivious as to why that should matter, and repeated, So what? There are so many reasons I love this boy, Jenny thought happily. I get those things out every year on this day and wonder why I was left on the steps of Hogwarts, she admitted. Harry noticed Ron's face turn red in anger. That piece of ectoplasmic shit! Peeves stole her watch, Ron explained before Harry could ask. Harry renewed his vow to find a way to either kill Peeves again, or at least make him truly miserable for a couple of centuries. We'll find it, Jenny, I promise, Harry swore solemnly. Hermione burst into the common room and was relieved to see Harry and Ron there. It saved her from having to track them down. Ron, Harry, something is wrong with the doctor, she blurted out. Ron gave Hermione a patronizing look. Yeah, he recently got buggered by about a dozen Dementors before you and Harry drove him off. I'd be surprised if something wasn't wrong with him, he told her. Hermione ignored Ron and looked straight at Harry. He was acting like he was hearing something only he could hear, and then ran off. I think he went to find whatever it was, she said pointedly. Harry knew exactly what Hermione was getting at. He had wondered if he was going mad during his second year when only he could hear the basilic that was traveling through the school's plumbing. Harry was torn between trying to help Jenny or the doctor. Jenny saw how Harry seemed divided. Harry Peeves had to hide that old broken watch somewhere in our dorm. He can't phase through walls while holding on to something, she pointed out. Go help the doctor, and if I haven't found it by the time you get back, you can help me look, she offered. Harry smiled at Jenny and then stood up from the couch. Let's go see if we can help the doctor, he said firmly. He looked down at Ron, who was still sitting. Ron looked from Harry to Hermione and then sighed wearily. If we end up finding another bloody giant snake, I'm blaming you, Hermione, he told her before getting up. The three six-year students hurried out into the rest of the castle after promising Ginny they would be back soon.